Greetings, my friends, and welcome back to the broadcast. Today I'm going to share chapters chapters 25 and 26 of the audiobook that I'm almost finished with uh, for the end of days, a 30-day devotional. Now today's both chapters deal with the spirit of Jezebel. This might be the most important two chapters in the entire book for this generation. And uh, so I hope that you take it seriously, and I hope that it blesses you and helps you and encourages you, especially if you're someone who's dealing with the lust of the flesh. And uh, so uh, hopefully, hopefully this will give you some assistance with that. Uh, real quick, um, if you haven't picked up a copy of the th- End of Days, a 30-day devotional, please consider doing so. It's one of the most inexpensive ways that you can help support uh, me and the work that I'm doing here. If you have picked up one, please consider going to Amazon, going and going and adding a five star rating. Um, right now, there's only five reviews, I think, or six reviews. Uh, so, so more of those reviews with a five star rating would really, really uh, help and benefit the book. Uh, so, if you've enjoyed it. Even if you've been blessed by the audiobook versions that you've been listening, please consider uh, doing that. That is all I have for you this morning. I pray in the powerful name of Jesus, in the powerful name of Yeshua, that you be blessed by these two chapters. And uh, may it speak directly to your hearts. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless. Day 25 The Spirit of Jezebel Part 1 Right now, one of the most destructive, harmful, faith-crippling, and life-destroying movements taking place in the world is what I like to call the Spirit of Jezebel. When I say the Spirit of Jezebel, I am mostly referring to sexual immorality. However, there are other aspects we don't have time to address in this book. The Spirit is not only vexing the souls of men, but in today's culture, it is just as harmful, if not even more harmful, to women. Not only are women indulging in pornography, in staggering numbers, but women are also indulging in overall sexual immorality, just as often as men. You add this to women being victims of sex trafficking and also being taken advantage of in the pornography industries, and you have a much worse situation for women than for men. Either way, the hearts and minds of humanity are being destroyed by sexual addiction and misconduct. I feel we often focus on the men when we talk about the spirit of Jezebel and forget how it has corrupted and harmed women as well. Sad to say, this is not just a worldly issue. It is every bit as present in the lives of Christians as in the lives of non-Christians. Unfortunately, the modern day church seems to take no issue or even notice. Either the church is afraid to speak out against it, or the church doesn't care. Even worse, we are seeing churches all over America and all over the world embrace and even celebrate sexual immorality. I believe this is just another sign we are, in fact, living in the end of days. In the book of Revelation, we see Jesus rebuking the church of Thyatira for tolerating a woman named Jezebel, who has seduced his servants to commit sexual immorality. As a result, Jesus pronounces judgment over Jezebel and over those who took part with her and promises to cast them into great tribulation. Do you see the seriousness of this? This sin is not taken lightly by Messiah. This sin, this spirit of Jezebel, will not only destroy your life, but it will destroy your faith and your relationship with the Lord. Revelation chapter 2 verses 20 through 23 say this, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. 
and I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. We must flee from this wicked spirit. We must not partake with her, lest we be thrown into a sick bed and into great tribulation, lest everything important to us be destroyed. Our relationships, our faith, our reputation. Most importantly, lest we become a fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his very birthright. See Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Today's call of action. This is a very serious issue, and I would argue the most destructive problem in Christianity today. The spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of sexual immorality, is corrupting the minds of our youth, our men, our women, and even our churches. We must resist, we must repent, and may God have mercy on us and forgive us these great trespasses. But unto you I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which you have already. Hold fast till I come. Revelation chapter 2. 24 through 25. Day 26. The Spirit of Jezebel, Part 2. Unfortunately, sexual immorality is just not taken seriously by the modern day church. In many cases, it's embraced and sometimes even celebrated. This should not be so. As the great Apostle Paul wrote, the sin of fornication or sexual immorality should not be named among God's people. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 3 through 4 say this, But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as become a saint's Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. The question then becomes, how do we overcome this immorality? We live in a world where temptation is around every corner. If you go to the grocery store, you will see flesh, half-naked people, dressed incredibly inappropriate. You will see billboards and posters of men and women in their underwear. Even if you sit down to watch television, you will see commercials and movie trailers showing great sexual immorality in graphic detail. The same goes for movies, social media, and video games. Everywhere we look is the temptation to lust, and this sin is not one to take lightly. Jesus taught lusting after a woman does not differ from committing the actual act of adultery. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 through 28 says this, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. The first thing we need to acknowledge and understand about the temptation of lust is it starts with our eye. Not in the heart and mind, but in the eye. Notice Jesus said, whosoever looketh. Right after the above statement, Jesus says something even more radical about the importance of overcoming sexual immorality. Matthew chapter 5, verse 29 says this, And if thy right eye offend thee, Pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable 
for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. What does our Messiah mean when he says, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out? Is Jesus literally telling us to gouge out our eye in order to avoid lust? I would argue Jesus is trying to tell us we must cut the sin off at the root. We must cut out the things which can lead us into sexual sin. Jesus makes it very clear how important it is to do so. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. This is a very serious statement many Christians overlook. According to Jesus, failing to overcome can lead us right into hell. The sin starts with the eye, and we must cut it off at the source, at the root. This could mean we may not be able to trust ourselves with things like social media. Reason being, there are several forms of social media which mostly filled with sexual inappropriate images. There are even a couple of social media platforms which make pornography openly and willingly available. This means even if you're not looking for trouble, the enemy can bring it before your eyes. We must cut it off. It might mean we no longer have cable or streaming services which provide tempting content that contains sexual immorality. Admittedly, it may not be fun or comfortable to do these things. It may not always be easy to look away when you are out and about and you see Jezebel walking your direction. However, the consequences of these sins are grave and much is at stake. Today's Call of Action You must never give up. If you fail, repent and start again. You must finish the race and finish it well. There is no pleasure of the eye worth sacrificing your inheritance for. There is no sin of the eye worth ruining your reputation and destroying your marriage for. Resolve in your heart to not even look and to cut the sin off at the source. May God have mercy on us in this and give us the strength to be overcomers through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God.